Last week, we looked at some recommendations for how you can make the phonological inventory for your language. Using that phonological inventory, we made the first word, which was just a consonant and a vowel. But that was all we could do. This week, I'm going to give you some recommendations for how you can make words that are more than one syllable long. We're going to review phonotactics and stress because those are responsible for giving the language its distinctive sound, um, for giving it the shape of its words. So sometimes you feel that a language is very sing-songy, sometimes you feel like the words are you know, very separated between them. It's the phonotactics and the stress patterns that give it that kind of feel. So I want to show you some examples of how languages do their phonotactics so that maybe you can choose one of these or be inspired for what you want your language to sound like. Here we have two examples of relatively simple syllable structures. And again, simple just means structurally simple. These languages can say anything that any other language can. They just do it with syllables that are consonant and vowel in the case of Kukanans Maori or consonant vowel consonant in the case of Kalashisut from Greenland. So in Cook Islands Maori, you can have syllables that are consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, as in kumara, sweet potato. Likewise in are, house, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. And that's it. There are no codas and you cannot have a consonant in coda position. As for the onsets, you can have any consonant really, but the language does not permit the combinations vu or vo. It, it, they're not words that are attested in the language. Um, so as you can see, Cook Islands Maori has a very simple phonological structure. It's very similar to Hawaiian, for example. I'm sorry, not phonological, phonotactics. Uh, Kalashisut can't have a coda. So for example, you have a word like kuhluk, thumb, where the last syllable is consonant, vowel, consonant. And you have words like ihlu, house, which are where the first syllable is a vowel and the second syllable is a consonant and a vowel. Not all sounds are good, are legal uh, for you to begin a word with. So you can bring in a word with p, t, k, but not with this fricative, with the hla. That one cannot go at the beginning of a word. Likewise, the codas uh, can be P, T, K, Q, but no others. You cannot have a word in Kalashisut end with the sound S or M, for example. Let's look at some languages that have uh, relatively more complex syllable structures. For example, Mandarin allows syllables that have consonant onset, um, a glide, a vowel, and only a very limited set of codas. So the first syllable of this uh, phrase, bu shi, bu, has a consonant and a vowel, and of course a tone, uh, a, a rising tone, bu. The second syllable has a consonant and a syllabic r. So shi, here the r is serving as the, as the vowel, as the nucleus of the syllable, bu shi. Take a look at this other uh, word, yi tian, one day. The second syllable of tian has a, uh, an onset consonant, a glide, and there's a limited number of glides that you can have. It has a vowel, and it has one of the permitted codas, an n. And only these sounds can be codas in a syllable in Mandarin. You cannot have a k or a t in coda position. Polish is a little bit more permissive. As you can see, you can have up to four consonants in the onset and up to five consonants in the coda, as in you will initiate, or disobedience. So you can have uh, relatively complex onsets, but if you have stops and fricatives in the onset, they must all have the same voicing. So for example, here you have and all of these are voiceless because they are stops and fricatives. The rule does not apply to nasals, but the stops and the fricatives must all be either voiced or all voiceless. 
And then there's some languages that are really out there. Georgian, for example, allows up to eight consonants in the coda. And I found an example with three cons, uh, sorry, up to eight consonants in the onset. And I found up to three consonants in the coda, but supposedly it allows up to six. So as for onsets, you have we are ashamed, which is described as one syllable. And a word like akft, they have, has three consonants in its coda. Uh, for more information about the many restrictions for these combinations, you can read this PhD dissertation here. And there's a language called Nuhalk from Canada, from the west coast of Canada, which is uh, reported to have this as a word. I think he had had in his possession a bunchberry plant. So yeah, probably the fricatives here are uh, syllabified. So they're the ones that are serving as vowels. But as you can see, this is a huge cluster of consonants. <laughs> so what should you do? You, what should you do for your language? You should choose one of these models. Maybe a more complex syllable structure, maybe easier. Maybe you want some sounds to uh, go together. Maybe you don't. But you need to figure out what the syllable structure is going to be for you to be able to build words made up of two or more syllables. And by the way, there's uh, syllabic st uh, structure complexity everywhere on the planet. The, the uh, pink dots uh, represent moderate complexity, and the red dots uh, represent very complex syllable structures. You can read more about the distribution of syllables in the world in the wall site. Okay, so your words need syllables, but you also need a stress system to figure out which of the two syllables is going to be more prominent. You can have fixed stress, which is completely predictable. And like in French, for example, the last syllable always gets the stress. Maison, for example. You can have it like in Polish, which is second to last, as in televisor. You can have variable stress, like in Spanish or Russian, where every word just has its stress and there's no way to predict it. You just need to learn it. There's a third system called predictable stress, where stress is assigned through some system of rules. A very nice example of this is Maori from Aotearoa, New Zealand. So Maori has two types of, va of syllables. You have light syllables that have consonants and vowels, like te, which means the. And you can have heavy syllables, for example, having consonant, vowel, vowel, as in reo, which means language. You can also have consonants and long vowel, like wahine, which means women. And this, was all, this will also be a heavy syllable. And so how do you assign stress? The stress goes on the leftmost heavy syllable. So for example, kai, food, only has one syllable and it's heavy, so the stress goes there. In the word fano, family, there's two heavy syllables, so you assign the stress to the leftmost one, fano. In the word marai, there's only one heavy syllable, but it's the last one. However, the rule says that the stress go, must go on the leftmost heavy, and that one is indeed the leftmost heavy, so the stress goes here. Marai. And if the word has no heavy syllables, you assign you put the stress on the leftmost light syllable, as in karanga to call. So it's a relatively simple algorithm, but as you can see, you can get fairly variable um, stress with it. And this is very common in the world, by the way. So now we have phonotactics and stress. Once you decide what your syllables are going to look like and which of them is going to be stronger and weaker, you can make a word. <laughs> so what I need you to do is be inspired by the examples and try to come up with a kind of phonotactics with the structure of your syllables and then a type of stress. And once you do that, you can combine syllables to create a word with two syllables and decide which of them is going to be more prominent or not. And by the way, you could do things that are more complex, like have a tonal language or have a pitch accent language like Japanese, where you have some of them high and some of them low. But if you're going to do that, let me know and we'll go through it together. Uh, by all means, go and invent a word.